So welcome back to another daily transfer update. Yesterday, I spoke about a guy's name I had absolutely no idea how to pronounce. I butchered his name. All you kind people were putting in the comments section how to pronounce it, and I'll probably still butcher it. Um, but he is the Ajax left-back Tagliafico, and um, he has signed a one-year contract, contract, contract extension with Ajax. They triggered the clause in his contract. Um, I was actually looking into this guy's um, details of his deal to Ajax. I was baffled they only paid £4 million for him. So when he does finally get sold, which will probably be next summer now, um, that's going to be a big, big profit for them. And fair play to Ajax because they have pulled a gem out there. Seriously top, top player. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen him a few times this season. Obviously watched the Champions League games and he looks like he's destined to go straight to the top. So who knows? He could even be a Champions League winner by the end of this campaign. They're obviously 1-0 up against Tottenham right now. Um, with the second leg to come next week. So, yeah, who knows? He could be in the Champions League final and what, what a way to go out um, of Ajax if he does leave this summer. Um, just because he signed that contract extension doesn't mean he's not going to leave. It just means that they can command more money for him now. But who knows? Um, I'm sure there'll still be rumours about that one going on all summer. Um, another one that we have been linked with today, and this has come out of nowhere, um, and that is for a 19-year-old Brazilian superstar. Um, how many times have we heard that before about a Brazilian? He's a wonder kid. That's, that's what the headline read. 19-year-old um, wonder kid. Um, he is a right winger and his name is Anthony Matthews Dos Santos. Um, let's hope he's better than the last Dos Santos that played in the Premier League for that lot down the road at Tottenham. Um, he was a flop, he was. Jesus Christ, that geezer was rubbish. Um, I can't remember who he ended up going to, but I think he played in the Spanish League for a little while. I think he's actually in the MLS now. Um, I'm pretty sure he's in MLS, but I may be wrong. Um, but yeah, we're linked with this guy. He can play right wing, which is his natural position. He can play left wing as well. Um, he plays for Sao Paulo. Uh, he's got contract until 2023. And he has a £42 million release clause. I genuinely do not get how a 19-year-old that's played two games this season, and I think he played about three or four games last season, how is his release clause £42 million? There's no way in a million years he's actually going to go for £42 million quid. And if he does, then whoever pays it, because it won't be us, uh, seriously, this kid better be amazing for 42 million quid at 19 years old. But I don't know. Um, I don't know anything about him. I genuinely do not know nothing about him. Um, I've watched a couple of YouTube videos, but they can be deceiving. We all see Yaya Sonogo look good in a, a YouTube compilation once, and Nicholas Bentner was another one. And the reality is, YouTube compilation videos can make absolutely anybody look amazing. Um, so anybody from Brazil, anybody um, who knows this guy, leave it in the comments section. Let me know if he's any good. Um, anybody who's a Sao Paulo fan that happens to stumble across my channel, obviously let me know how good he is or how bad he is or whether he is worth the money. Um, but Unai Emery said to be interested in him. Um, I'm not sure this will happen. Not, not because we probably don't want him, but more for the fact of a work permit issue. Um, when you're signing players from that part of the country, um, that part of the world, sorry, and they've not played full international games, it is nigh on impossible to get a work visa for them. Um, so if we did sign him, firstly, it wouldn't be for £42 million. And secondly, we'd probably have to loan him out somewhere um, before being able to get that visa. So, um, you know, I'm not too disappointed. We're being linked with players in positions we need, though. We need a winger. The other day, it was defenders we were being linked with. Um, the next one is um, Rabio. Obviously, this is going to go on forever, this one. This is just going to drive me mad. Um, today, he's been linked with Juventus. Um, I'm not sure why Juventus would want him. I know he's a free signing. I know they like free signings. Most of their squad were free signings at one point. Um, and obviously, they've signed Aaron Ramsey on a free signing. But he just reminds me too much of Aaron Ramsey. I'm sorry, but why would they want him? I don't get why Juventus would want two players of exactly the same position when they've already got other players that are as good, if not better, at Juventus in that position. So it seems a bit of a weird one, but we're linked with him. But this 
this guy is apparently commanding over £200,000 a week in wages. And as good as he is, is he worth two hundred grand a week? Probably not. Um, would I be disappointed if we don't sign him in the summer? No. Um, I'd like him at Arsenal, don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it if we don't sign him. At the end of the day, he seems like he's got a bit of an attitude. I think his mum's his agent and he's come out before and slagged her off and I think he actually sacked her as well. Um, so if he can sack his own family members, is that really the sort of guy that you, um, that you want at your club, especially when he's commanding 200 or 250 grand a week? And um, let's be real, he's playing with Mbappe, he's playing with Neymar, good, good players. Does he really want to come to Arsenal to play for Arsenal or does he just want a big payday? For me, I think he's got a bit of an attitude and I think he's just after the payday, if I'm being completely honest. Um, so I don't know. But one thing I do know is we definitely need to replace Aaron Ramsey in the summer. And um, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that in terms of what player that's going to be or how we're going to go about it. But um, obviously Smith Rowe, he's out on loan at the moment. He's actually injured. He's been injured for the most part. Um, but I think that's somebody we need to utilise in the team next season because there's no doubt about that kid's quality. And that could be an answer to our midfield issue because let's be real. We're going to be losing Mohamed El Nenny. Well, I say losing, it's not a loss, let's be real. Um, we're going to be losing Aaron Ramsey. Now, that, that is a loss, let's be real. He's been decent this season. Um, can we do better in terms of players? Yes, I think we can. But it is a loss, and he has probably been our most consistent midfielder this season in terms of central midfield. Um, so, yeah, I think, he's, um, I think he's had a pretty good season. But the problem with him is he is injury prone. Um, not only big injuries, but these little niggling ones that keep you out for three, four, five weeks. So we need to um, we need to replace him definitely. And like I said, I think Smith Rowe would be an ideal candidate. Um, but I still think we need to go out there and get something on top of that as well. So then you don't have to rely on a 19 year old kid coming in um, in that midfield in a Premier League for a team that want to go and challenge for, for titles and trophies. There's a lot of pressure for a young kid. So. You know, with these kids, you just got to bed them in slowly. You can't just throw them in. Yeah, it'd be nice to throw a couple of them in and we all want to see them fl fly with Arsenal. But the fact is, they'll get burnt out. Um, and if it don't go the right way, the fans are turning them very, very quickly. So we can't really be having that. Um, so we definitely, definitely need to go and buy someone. Um, one other thing I want to talk about as well, and it's not necessarily to do with transfers. Um, last night, I see that... Um, I see that um, the most valuable clubs in the Premier League has come out, the, um, the full 20 teams in the Premier League. Um, I'm only going to do the top six. This shocked me, massively shocked me. And this just shows how far Arsenal Football Club have fallen. This shows how much Champions League can dent your revenue and your income and your club as a value, uh, overall value. Uh, Manchester City are valued as the most valuable football club in the Premier League. They have overtaken Manchester United. They are now valued at £2.3 billion. Man United are valued at £2 billion. This was a surprise. Tottenham Hotspur are third. They are the most, third most valuable club in the Premier League at £1.8 billion, which ironically is where we were last season or the season before. Um, Liverpool and Chelsea are both worth 1.6 billion and out of the top six we are valued at the least amount of money and we have been in that stadium for a lot lot longer than Tottenham a lot longer than Man City so you know read into that what you will Liverpool only had an extension on their stadium in recent years um, Man United and um, Chelsea are obviously their, their stadiums have been there forever but we move to compete with Europe's elite and we can't even compete in terms of um, transfers, wages and overall value of club with Tottenham Hotspur. Really? Come on, man. What's that all about? But that just shows how far backwards we've gone, sadly. And, you know, listen, at the end of the day, we've got an owner who don't care, couldn't care less. He probably don't even know when we're playing games. Um, we had a manager that spent poorly. We had a CEO that just spun a yarn every time a transfer window come out. 
Um, and we've got a load of players that we badly need to get rid of, whether it be this summer, this summer and January, or the, this summer, January and next summer. We need pretty much three quarters of this squad out the door. So it's going to be a big, big summer for us. Let's hope the club are up to it. Let's hope Unai Emery gets some money. And if he doesn't, then we're in the same position again next season. Anyway, don't forget, go back and check out my last video about what you would do someday in terms of um, squad rotation. That was um, posted last night. One o'clock today, I will be posting my press conference reaction from Unai Emery's press conference yesterday. And then nine o'clock tonight, I will be posting my preview for the Brighton game. So until all of that, I'm out of here. Laters, peeps.